British shipyards build vessels for the fleets of the world. In their docks are constructed tankers, freighters, liners, ships of war. This is the story of the first ship ever built for the Royal New Zealand Navy, Her Majesty's New Zealand ship Otago. Otago is a Whitby-class frigate, as dangerous to submarines as they can be to surface shipping. She is a hunter of submarines, fast, easily handled, equipped with the most efficient aids to detection. At Southampton, three years of work go into building Otago before she's ready for delivery to our Navy. From New Zealand comes the crew which will man her, take her through weeks of trials and sail her home. Fifteen officers and 200 ratings, that's Otago's complement. In June, these men come aboard to begin three months of workup exercises. There'll be speed trials, mock battles, trials against the weather. Men must have time to find their way about a new home. No hammocks here, bunks for everyone. Air conditioning too. The ship is compact and it's crowded, but it's comfortable. These days, boys leave home because eat cooking is better than mothers. And the Navy provides automatic dishwashers and potato peelers. There are buffet serveries. In fact, all the good things of modern culinary science. A few days settling in and trials are due to start. On comes the ammunition, torpedoes, shells for the 4.5, shells for the Bofors. The Otago is making ready for a very serious game. On come the mortar shells to be fired by electronic command at a track down enemy submarine. Such weapons seldom miss. Equipped as she would be in war, Otago slides out into the English Channel to begin her working life. The ship is going to school. The battles she'll fight with craft of the Royal Navy are only part real. No vessels will go to the bottom, no planes will be shot down. Yet Otago will be handled as if she were fighting for her life. The ship and her crew will be judged on their powers of survival. The first test is underway. Not a battle, but a tricky refueling exercise. In a running sea, the speedy Otago must keep abreast of a slow tank. The oil with which Otago is fed drives the steam turbines that can take her up to over 30 knots. The tanker pulls away. Otago is waiting for the next stage of her workup. from above and beneath the ocean. This is the time in war when men must really know their ship, know how it works and what it can do. past when a duffel-coated skipper handles his ship while striding an open bridge. From this dimly lit room, the captain controls Otago's fight. The murmur of voices and the hum of computers are the only sounds as an electronic brain calculates the position of an underwater enemy. Even an atomic submarine must approach within five miles of a ship before it strikes. 
well inside the range of Otago's detectors. Hunted down, the enemy rises guiltily to the surface. It couldn't have escaped. Every twist and turn of its evasive action was followed on Otago's spotting tape. The new frigate has done well in her trials, and the seamanship of her crew is proven. The Navy knows what to expect from Otago if she should ever have to go to war. In a few days, she'll be ready to sail home to New Zealand. For a little while, Otago lies in the pool of... She takes on stores for the homeward trip. Boxes of this and that, all the things dear to a sailorman's heart. New Zealand pallets don't like margarine, a New Zealand ship must carry New Zealand butter. Royalty visits Otago to wish her Godspeed. Princess Margaret, who launched the ship, comes aboard with her husband, Mr. Anthony, them a New Zealand as well as a naval welcome. How often has a Maori haka been performed in the middle of the River Thames? November the 17th. Goodbye to the barges and tugs of the Thames on this London winter's day. Like countless ships before her, Otago moves slowly down the river. She flies under the great iron span of Tower Bridge. past Deptford, the British Navy's first dockyard. From here sailed the ancient mariners in their wooden frigates. In the fading light, Otago passes Greenwich Naval College and becomes, as she enters the estuary, one small part of this river's naval history. Destination, Dunedin, the port of Otago. Ports of call, Gibraltar, Malta, Suez, Aden, Colombo, Singapore, Fremantle, Melbourne. Two months on the high seas, the Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean, Arabian, the Indian Ocean, the South Pacific. A new ship sailing for the first time the shipping lanes of half the world. Otago's at Gibraltar. For 250 years, Britain